are back to football 101. We are officially back. This is NFL. This is NFL training camp show number two. Number two. And we are focusing upon the AFC North. That's right. The AFC North. That's right. This is I am your host, the Beatle. And yes, we are officially back. <laughs> I told you we're gonna go through the entire the entire NFL <laughs> divisions, and this is show number two. We're going to look at the AFC North, the AFC North featuring featuring uh, Baltimore Ravens, featuring Cincinnati Bengals, featuring Cleveland Browns, and featuring the Pittsburgh Steelers. So yes, we are hyped. We're ready to go. It's July. Training camps have not started Officially, uh, the players are reporting. A uh, matter of fact, the Pittsburgh Steelers are reporting today, and all the players are uh, basically getting ready, uh, uh, going through the uh, final uh, training for training camp. All their prep, uh, getting their conditioning in, and uh, starting the NFL 2021 season. Wow, we are really here. It, it, it's I mean, the hype is over the top. I've been watching. A little, a little quick shout out to Good Morning Football again, my boys, my my boys, at, yeah, my boys and 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 uh, my lady at uh, Good Morning Football. A shout out to Kay Adams. Shout out to Kay Adams hosting Good Morning Football. Yes, Kay Adams. Yeah, you you bring the knowledge. You bring the pain. You bring the bring the realism. K. Adams, uh, my boy Nate, Nate Bertelson bringing it. Uh, I think uh, uh, Pelissero is sitting in for Pete uh, for Shregs this week, as well as my boy Kyle Brandt. <laughs> so I'm giving a little shout out again to Good Morning Football and uh, NFL Network. Um, they're giving us, getting us hyped up for the training camp, NFL training camps, and I'm surprised that. I'm quite surprised that ESPN is not rolling out their uh, their pre-training camp uh, activities. But give it up to the NFL Network, Good Morning Football. And by the way, I just learned that the NFL Network is will be uh, uh, showcasing, premiering, broadcasting so many preseason games, so many training camp games, preseason games, real the preseason games. And I just learned, so props to NFL Network to broadcasting the uh, preseason games. And also, just learned today in the uh, uh, Dallas Cowboys press conference with Jerry Jones and McCarthy uh, uh, press conference that, yes, they're going to host uh, Hard Knocks, HBO Hard Knocks. So it looks like Jerry Jones is in, in prime, uh, prime form uh, at their training camp at Oxnard. Oxnard, California, and you know the Beatle used to live in uh, California, uh, San Pedro. A little shout out to San Pedro, California, South LA. So le <laughs> let me get to, this is show number two. Again, show number two. I want to welcome each and every one of you. To, uh, and uh, again, uh, 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 quick, even a quick, oh my, I'm being so nice. Quick shout out to the uh, new NBA champions, Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks, uh, Giannis and crew took it to uh, Phoenix Suns and won it, uh, won the uh, last night's game. And the Milwaukee Bucks fans well deserve a shout out to Kareem Abdul Kareem Abdul Jabbar uh, uh, with formerly with the Milwaukee Bucks when their last championship occurred uh, during the seventies, early seventies. So a quick shout out to NBA. Why not? It's it's pre it's training camp. So let me get to. Like I said, this is the Beatle, and, and, and by the way, for those of you who do not know the Beatle, myself, yes, I'm a former football player. Yes, uh, and defense, uh, defense and offense, um, primarily a defensive back, cornerback, also safety. Uh, back in high school and uh, middle school, but also college, uh, playing at Miami University in Ohio. Shout out to the Mac. Shout out to the Mac. Okay, so there you go. That's a little bit of me, but. Let's get to uh, how I perceive training camp right now for the AFC North. AFC North. And I'm, I'm laying down the predictions already. I mean, it's so much hype, so much pre-hype. But uh, you're going to have to bank it. Please, show, uh, let me just say, 
please like and subscribe my videos. Like, like, subscribe, like, subscribe <laughs> my, my my YouTube channel. So please like and subscribe my YouTube channel on YouTube. Okay, so uh, I'm doing all the uh, prep work, but I'm just going to run down the deal. I'm five minutes in, and uh, last show, show number one, I did the AFC East. Now it's the AFC North, and wow, we got some surprises. Hello. Yeah, we got some surprises. This is, now let me just say, this is a physical, and I do mean physical. Uh-uh, uh-uh, physical division. This is the AFC North. This is, the, okay, this is real football right here. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little pre little biased here. This is, uh-oh, uh -oh, here we go. This, this is real, this is when it gets down and dirty and nasty. And you find out where players, NFL players are during training camp. And it's time to get real during training camp, particularly in the AFC North. Uh, I'm picking. Uh, here we go. Number one, who will finish the season? Number one, I'm picking Cleveland Browns. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm from Ohio. What can I say? Uh, I'm picking Cleveland Browns, number one. Uh, one A, uh, actually one A, one B, Baltimore Ravens. Yes, I'm giving up to Baltimore Ravens. It's going to be a tie. It's going to be a tie in the AFC North. Cleveland Browns, Baltimore Ravens coming in second. Coming in second after the tie with Cleveland Browns and Baltimore Ravens. Coming in second are the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> yes, the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'm from Ohio. I'm from the Dayton, Cincinnati area. So, wow. Yes, yes. And last... Uh, and actually third in the division are the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's just like, wow, this feels like a Twilight Zone moment in the AFC North. But this is a, and the reason why uh, it's all about uh, the changing of the guard in the AFC North. It's about getting real. It's about real football. Okay. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's cut through the chase. Uh, like I said, AFC North is probably, and I give it props to Good Morning Football uh, uh, when they said just a few days ago that probably the AFC North is the most uh, competitive, I'm going to say the most competitive division in the NFL, bar none. Because reason why it's so competitive, they, they get back down to the base, it's, it's, it's physical football. It, it's, it's man up, it's, it's get in your face. And it starts with training camp. It starts with training camp. Uh, and they don't play in the AFC North just because of the logistics being in the Midwest. Okay? It, it, the climate's not that great. You have to play in, you know, okay, warm air, warm climate uh, initially. And then it gets drastically colder and colder and colder, inclement weather. And you have to play traditional type of football with an up level, upscale level of uh, of way the NFL is. So let me go start with number one, the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, on uh, <laughs> yeah on the banks of the Lake Erie. And by the way, I just re not recently, but a couple of years ago, visit Cleveland. Oh man, the the stadium, uh, right, <laughs> right there on Lake. It looks so daggone good. And let me just say, I, I, I got to give a shout out to how they reorganized downtown Cleveland. Uh, it felt so good. It felt, it real felt so good to be in Cleveland. I, I kid you not. And I'm, I'm from the lower portion of, of Ohio. I didn't know it was that good. <laughs> so I can understand why players and the Cleveland has changed around logistically. Just to say, but getting back, <laughs> get to the players. Yes, Baker Mayfield is the man. Uh, I, I'm I'm probably his most uh, uh, biggest critic, and I didn't think Baker Mayfield would finally establish himself as a, a, a high level quality quarterback. So I'm one of the biggest critics of Baker Milf Mayfield, and he has truly established himself. Excuse me. I'm too excited right now. Sorry about that. Uh, 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 <laughs> everything's flying, you know. 
But Baker Mayfield, uh, he's the man. He's, he's getting ready to go through contract negotiations, as I just heard moments ago, that it looks like from the NFL Network uh, that uh, they they need to re uh, reconstruct your other players' uh, contracts before Baker Mayfield. But make, Baker, he, he's going to get a big payday, rightly so. So uh, Baker is is the man. He He's established himself. He's calmed himself down. He realized he doesn't have to do it, uh, all, everything. They are so talented on offense with Nick Chubb. By the way, getting his contract renegotiated. Nick Chubb, ph phenomenal running back. He brings the pain between the tackles. He runs hard. And, and and behind, and not behind, but next to Nick Chubb, it's one and two. It's Kareem Hunt. That's right, Kareem Hunt. Man, when you have a one-two running tech like that, uh, they're tenacious. And Kareem runs through the tackles. He runs over the tackles. He moves in, out, all types of way. So the running tech is physical. The, their offensive line is very physical. And let me give a shout-out to their head coach, Kevin Stefanski. Uh, I, again, I am pleasantly... A place where Kevin Stavansky has molded this team to the way he wants it. And uh, wow, I, I, again, impressed, thoroughly impressed. And he's an outstanding head coach of what Cleveland really needed. He, he, he identifies their identity and he's sticking with it. And he's bringing in superstar, but also quality athletes. Again, with Baker Mayfield, uh, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, and of course Jarvis Landry, wide receiver. He's he's the money man. <laughs> when you need three yards, when you need the clutch catch, when you need first down, go to Jarvis Landry. Uh, by the way, I was there, and, and bringing in Jarvis Landry, I was in Cleveland right when they signed Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ, and now OBJ is healthy. He's back. I've seen uh priest I uh, seen what was it um uh, tape on him uh during uh during the uh mini training camp he's back in shape he's running his routes OBJ watch out he's ready to prove that he still is the man now he's not going to be the OBJ of the old but he's going to make fantastic plays and he he will dominate the game still uh, a couple of games throughout the season. So OBJ, uh, uh, let me just say, he is back. OBJ is back. Uh, but they don't want, don't need him as much because they won without OBJ. But just to have Odell Beckham Jr. on the field running routes, not necessarily the deep routes, but making plays. Getting him back into the flow, Jarvis Landry and OBJ, they are like, uh, they're they're one. Jarvis Landry, Landry recruited OBJ to Cleveland, and like I said, when I, I saw the press conference when OBJ arrived, uh, you can just see the uh, the connection that they have, uh, the the SEC connection that they have, LSU. Uh, I mean, it, it's a thing of beauty, uh, and I think they will get that back. Along, don't forget about, yes, Donovan Peoples-Jones, the wideout, another wideout. He is phenomenal. So, again, the reason why I bring up the running attack and the wide receivers, they have the offense, the physical offense. They can run. They can pass. They can throw deep. They can just run between the tackles and just get physical and nasty. In the in the AFC North, when the weather gets bad, on the turf, in the grass, or in Cleveland, or in the in the stadium where it's on the lake, <laughs> and you know it's going to get nasty in Cleveland, in Baltimore, in Pittsburgh, in Cincinnati. So Cleveland, yeah, I picked them number one, one A. With their defense, let me just say, oh my gosh, Miles Garrett, again, 
bring the pain or as a def- as that edge rusher. I'm still impressed. And, you know, I'm I'm a little cri- I'm a critic of Miles Garrett cuz uh he's kind of uh, you know, yes, I I'm I'm I admit what I say on record. Miles Garrett he has to be more physical. He's been more physical. But now they've added they've added Jadavion Clowney. Jadavion Clowney on the other edge. And you know Jadavion Jadavion Clowney will give you a couple of fantastic sacks in critical areas, critical issues, as well as, as long as he stays healthy. Coming from Tennessee Titans, Jadavion Clown, you have the edge rushers. And then they're in process, process right now, of signing up, hooking up Denzel Ward, cornerback, giving him a big-time deal, of which he deserves. So you need the back end secure. And they have some great DBs as well as some great linebackers. But you need to lock up Denzel Ward. The back end. So I really like the back end, the defensive backs, the cornerbacks, the safeties. Ronnie Harrison included. Greedy Williams and, and Denzel Ward. The back end. So they play a very physical defense. They they fly around. They're they're always making plays. The defense is very good. Not outstanding. They're physical. They flow faster than physical. They're not as physical one-on-one, but they flow so well. They flow so well. And with that offense, controlled offense, taking up time, so I, I'm picking right now. Yeah, oh gosh, I got to move on. I'm picking the brownies. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking the brownies. Number one, 1A in the AFC North. They have proven it. And they, by the way, they almost, they almost stole that game from KC last year in the AFC Championship. Don't forget that. So they're making strides. The brownies... <laughs> The Cleveland Browns, tradition of the Browns, which I used to watch them during way back during the '60s on my black and white on our black and white TV with Jim Brown, Jim Kelly, and all the boys, Leroy Kelly. I'm sorry, Leroy Kelly, my boys. Uh, oh my gosh, Paul Warfield. Oh, Paul Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, the uh, the the, uh, the QB. Oh, uh, Collins, the wide receiver. Oh my gosh, I'm 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 really going back to day de- to the day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the Brownies won a on on that, so I'm gonna give them credit because uh, it's the AFC North. You gotta be physical. One B, Baltimore Ravens. That's right. One B, Baltimore Ravens. They're gonna be tied with the Cleveland Browns uh, with uh, with my boy uh, head coach. Oh come on, I have to give it up to my head coach John Harbaugh. My boy, John Harbaugh, graduate of Miami University, defensive back. And yes, and I was fortunate to be on the same team as John Harbaugh at Miami University back in the day, 1980. Check the Rex! So <laughs> that's a little prop. <laughs> but give it up to John Harbaugh, how much he, I know he's a physical type of person. Just by being a DB. Coming from Miami University, Ohio. But he still is supporting and going all in on Lamar Jackson. And let me just say, yes, uh, Lamar, he's elevating his game to another level. He's unpredictable, but he's up to that upper echelon as a QB. So they're they're making the they're really nurturing his skill level as a quality quarterback. More running than passing, yet they have the tools. They have uh, outstanding running backs, just like J.K. JK Dobbins bringing the pain. Yes, uh, formerly Ohio State running back. J.K. Dobbins, thank you. They're wide receivers. Uh, Marquise Brown, Devin Duvernay. Uh, Again, they have mixed uh, a mixed. uh, quality athletes uh, coming and going uh, and, and uh, again uh, they're just a physical very physical team and that's where uh, uh, John Harbaugh 
has designed this team over the years, they're very, very physical. They run between the tackles. Okay? They can throw deep, but they're going to use uh, even uh, Lamar Jackson's skills to another level. And I believe you will see Lamar Jackson. He, he's a very emotional guy, but I think he will learn to throw more, uh, let me just say, responsible <laughs> this year and still um, by far use his legs to get the first downs. And uh, uh, again, it, 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 it further amazes me how, how much he, he has that fast twitch that you just can't teach. And, and you allow him to do his thing. That's right. Let Lamar Jackson do his thing. And that's the unpredictable, uh, predictability, unpredictability about Lamar Jackson. Let him do his thing. And that's what John Harbaugh is allowing him to do. And then with the defense being so physical, uh, again, the defense is more their preference. Uh, they they have an outstanding pass rusher. They have one of the best linebackers, Patrick Patrick Queen. Uh, I mean, they are so physical up front. The fast linebackers, great DBs, and I think I, I missed one of the DBs who didn't play last year, but he will be back this coming year. Again, the defense, they rely upon their defense to keep the scores down. And this is a serious defense. Serious. They bring the pain. But here's the difference between the uh, uh, the uh, uh, why I have them 1A. The Ravens' defense is fast and physical. They're faster than the Browns' defense. And they're more physical than the Browns' defense. So, yes, I love the Ravens' defense. They're fast. They're physical. They bring the pain. And they're not going to let up. And they will always keep the Ravens into the game. So, give it up to uh, John Harbaugh for, for continuing to move and bring in free agents and draft well to, make, to continue to keep this Baltimore Ravens Defense at a high level, very high level. But this is a different type of defense. They're fast and physical. They're one of the fastest uh, defensive players, defensive uh, teams that I've seen. So I love the Baltimore Ravens. It's just that feeling when you have to, when you play Baltimore, you know it's going to be very physical. But they're very fast. Look how fast that defensive squad really is. That's the difference. And the only team, only defense that can really match. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I'm, yes, I'm going to say the only defense that can match them and a, a, is a bit better. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> I went out of the scope. Tampa Bay Buccaneers is probably, is no doubt the better defense in the other conference, NFC. So I'm giving the Baltimore Ravens defense at the highest elevation, highest level in the AFC. They're that good. So that's the reason why they are 1B. They're going to be right there. Now, and coming in second, yes, coming in second, I'm having the Cincinnati Bengals. That's right, the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, uh, many of the games I went to, professional games I went to in Ohio was, was the Cincinnati Bengals. And yes, the Bengals are there. I kid you not. The Bengals are there. Why? Because of Joe Burrow, quarterback, coming from, you know, superstar. I, yes, he's a superstar. You know, I waited and I looked at his game last year before he got injured. Wow. This kid, he could see the field. This kid could throw the rock. And he did it last year with the, you know, average team. But now the breakout star will be T. Higgins. The breakout star will be newly acquired draft pick Jamar Chase, wide receiver from LSU, his former teammate at LSU. They're going to break new records. Yes, they got rid of 
Finally, AG Green, AJ Green, uh, always injured. You know, superstar in his own right, superstar in his own right, but he's older and he's injury prone. So now they have Jamar Chase. And what I've seen of Jamar Chase back at LSU, but this brother can run routes. He is fast. He is fluid. He runs routes very well. And when you get to the NFL as a wide receiver, it's all about running routes crisply. Crisply. <laughs> I'm getting right. Crisply. <laughs> right to the point. <laughs> know your technique. And what I've seen of Jamar Chase, he runs his routes, routes very crisply. Very crisply. <laughs> and then they have, don't forget, Joe Mixon in the background, in the back, in the backfield. He, he's coming off an injury, but Joe Mixon is the real. He's a very, very physical a running back. Uh, he runs high, but he runs physical. He runs through through tackles. And yes, they got rid of uh, Giovanni Bernard. I think uh, he's in. I believe he's in Tampa Bay now. But uh, again, a uh, little shout out to G Giovanni. Uh, G TV on Bernard, uh, I really liked him. Uh, but again, their offense is more high power. Their defense is is much more physical, much more having in a quarterback as Trey Wayne's, and, and they uh, they got rid of what you call him. But I really like what they've done with their defense. Their defense is very physical. By the way, they also have Marcus Bailey on the on on their defense. <laughs> Little shout out to Marcus Bailey. A uh, uh, defensive end, Sh uh, Sam uh, Hubbard, got rid of Geno Atkins, Christian Covington, and uh, the the, uh, the linebackers. Uh, I, I believe they picked up an excellent linebacker. Let me give a shout out to Zach Taylor, the head coach. He's retooled this team. I'm very impressed. Uh, uh, um, again, I give uh, props to head coaches when they change in the culture of places. And within the short period of time that Zach Taylor has been there. He's changed the culture of Cincy. It's needed. They they got the star player Joe Burrow uh, from Ohio, from Athens, Ohio, and uh, it's it's full full board. And I believe Joe Burrow, uh, he he's the real deal. And let me give give some time, some props to Joe Burrow. Yes, he's a superstar. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I said it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on record. Yes, Joe Burrow is a superstar. Because he has a level head. He doesn't get overhyped, over, over, um, uh, out of the whack when he gets all the hype. He has all the skills. He can throw deep. He can throw short. He's mobile. He knows the playbook. And he just needs more weapons. Uh, the kid is... Uh, and I'll just say very mature for his, it's just his second year. What I saw in his first year, man, he, 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 he almost, he, many times he took the team on his back by himself. So if he has t uh, players, skilled athletes along with, him, yeah, he's that good. So I'm giving props to Joe Burrow, uh, uh, Mr. Joe Burrow. I give props to it. Again, I had to see him the first year. And he, many times again, he took the team on his own back and and, and, and made the games competitive when they were, really should not have been competitive. But Joe Burrow did that last year. So I'm expecting big things. His second year, his sophomore year, Joe Burrow, with the new talent that he has and a better uh, defense, uh, they will be in games and they will finish second. In this division, they will be right there. And don't be surprised they make the playoffs. That's right. Don't be surprised the Bengals make the playoffs. They're that good. So I'm giving props to Cincy Bengals. <laughs> Man, I can't even believe her. That fast. Uh, you know, usually I would say about three or four years, but no, they're that good. And then. Coming, <laughs> yes, oh my lord, coming in third in the AFC North, I know you're not anticipating, all the Pittsburgh fans 
are throwing. Uh, I know you hate me. I know you hate me. But I'm gonna just gonna be real. I'm gonna be real with the Pittsburgh fans. I'm a little bit long in this production because I'm waiting for this issue. Uh, oh my God! Yes, Pittsburgh's gonna come in third in the AFC North and will not make the playoffs. <laughs> no, you will not make the playoffs. I said it. I'm I'm on I'm on you. <laughs> they will not make the play because the AFC North is so good. That see, you have to win your division. You have to win. Uh, the games in your division to make the playoffs. And when I see how the rest of the teams have changed over their personnel and gotten faster, more physical, I have to put the, the Pittsburgh Steelers third in this division. And yes, it starts with head coach Mike Nolan. They have a new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. He changed out everything because they played so poorly at the end of the season. They started off hot, and they just nosedived, nosedived at the end. And I'm not going to pick out any particular player. <laughs> it's too easy to pick out a particular player. And, and let me just say this. I come from the old school. I was a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan during the 70s. Hello, Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, Rocky Blyer. Come on, Lynn Swan. Come on, Jack Ham. The front four, including Green, uh, <laughs> Joe Green, Elsie Greenwood. Holmes, my boys. <laughs> oh, man. I could just run it all down. Donnie Shell. <laughs> I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers diehard 70s fan. But it's 2021. And they look bad. Yeah, on, on paper, they look physical. On paper, they look physical. On paper, on paper, they look physical. But in reality, it, 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 it is a travesty. I, I'm saying, oh, I'm I'm on tape saying they are a travesty. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed about the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm embarrassed. They look good on paper. Yes, they've inquired just the other day, uh, Melvin Ingram, <laughs> uh, uh, a throw away from the Chargers, defensive end. They also picked up another defensive uh, uh, front four person, signing for a one-year contract. Now, they did a great job in the draft in picking, uh, selecting Najee Harris, running back from, uh, from Alabama. Now, that Najee Harris will be a superstar. Najee Harris will be a He will reestablish the running game in Pittsburgh. I'm giving props to Najee Harris. Najee Harris, man, the brother is so cool. And he, he, he's, a, he's a champion. And on paper, they uh, let me just go to the offense. And, of course, start with Ben Rosselberger. Ben, man, I love you, man. Fellow Miami University graduate. Yes, I, I saw you when you were a junior at Miami University. I saw you throwing the rock at Miami University. Man, you're a superstar. You're going to go down as, obviously, a Hall of Famer. Yes, you will. Ben coming in shape, in the best shape, as they say, ever. <laughs> as they said last week, and they said a few days ago, Ben is in his best shape ever. I, I take them for their word for it. 
It's so hard. It, it's so hard. But Ben Roethlisberger, uh, your day's a number. Uh, the enthusiasm, the tenacity, the grit is just not there. I don't see it yet. It may change as I see them get in their pads of training camp. I saw him during mini camp. Ben always looks good just throwing the ball in the shorts. But when it when, when it, it's just over the years, let me just, over the years, I've just seen Roethlisberger digress. I, I, I'm putting this on. I've seen over the years that Roethlisberger has digressed. He's getting rid of the ball fast. He's not. He can't be as physical. He can't take the hits anymore. He used to drag defensive linemen on him while he's throwing the ball <coughs> on a line 30 yards down the field. Now he's just getting the ball, throwing it out, throwing it out, throwing it out through his wide receivers, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, and, of course, Juju Smith. Schuster, Juju, Mr. TikTok. Juju, Mr. TikTok. Is that, let me, that is ridiculous. That's not the Steeler way. Yes, that's not the Steeler way. Talk about tradition. All you Steeler fans, you know that Juju stuff is not the Steeler way. Terry Bradshaw called Juju out last year. And I'm just so disappointed. I'm gonna I'm on tape. Disappointed in Mike Tomlin not calling out Juju Smith. Come on. He lost the team. So now he has a new offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and he's bringing in all these defensive uh free agents because he knows he has to build up the defense. Of course, he has superstar, uh, uh, superstar, uh, um, let me make sure, uh, Cameron Hayward's back, obviously, and, oh, Devin Bush is there, TJ Watt will be bringing the pain, and, uh, old, old, <laughs> old Joe Hayden, former Cleveland Browns, getting torched every day. On defense, but again, the reason why I'm picking them third is that it's plug and play. And I, I, I'm pro I may miss on this pick, but it, it's just telling you I'm so disappointed in the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I, I just miss those days of when they were really physical. They look great on paper, but I just don't see the energy. I don't see, I don't see the uh, urgency. Because this will be Ben Roethlisberger last year. If they don't make the playoffs, this is his last. This should be his last year anyway. He was he he, he took a pay cut. Just it, uh, Ben always takes a pay cut. He's only been to one Super Bowl. He won one Super Bowl. How many years ago? <laughs> but I, I I still got much respect to Ben Roethlisberger, Hall of Famer. But uh, again, I just got to tell it like it is. As a fellow MU alumni, uh, I am uh, uh, I'm still, you know, it's the waning years. And uh, what can you say about the Pittsburgh Steelers? I know I'm going to receive a lot of hate from the Pittsburgh Steelers fans, but that's the way I see it from the AFC North. I went long. <laughs> I went too long on this on this show. Because I have so much love for the Pittsburgh Steelers tradition. And, uh, and the Roonies. And the Roonies. And the, and the Super Bowls. And the Steeler defense of the 70s. And now, man, I don't I, I can't recognize this team at all. I don't I can't recognize this team at all. So yes, they look good in the black and gold. And Steeler Nation travels well across the nation but the reality is, is 2021 and Mike Nolan is on his last leg if they do not make the playoffs he's gone I'm saying it right and Mike Nolan 
brother I like. I love you, brother. And he, and, oh, they also have, <laughs> this, this is, no, <laughs> I didn't even anticipate this. This is how bad, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm improvising right on the spot. I'm improvising right on the spot, y'all. This is how bad, this, <laughs> this is how bad the Pittsburgh Steelers are. Uh, they have, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, Haskins. As the court, as the backup quarterback, Dwayne Haskins is the backup quarterback. Released by the Washington Football Team last year because a brother from Ohio State, who I love from Ohio State, could not bust the grade. <laughs> Washington rest, Washington Washington Football Team. Now he's the sec, he's the second string, I think second string quarterback for Pittsburgh Steelers. And Mike Nolan feels sorry for him. He's got great skill level, but his maturity level is not that great. He's the backup to Ben Rossenberger. That's how desperate the Pittsburgh Steelers are. Come on. And they let go James James Conner. He's in he's in Arizona now because James Conner couldn't bust the grape of getting past the line of scrimmage. They were so again, a fellow Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh graduate. They let him go. And again, Najee Harris uh, will will perform well. But the Steelers are plug and play. And I went too long on this because I, I just feel so bad for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, man. Sorry, Steeler Nation. I went for you. I, I'm, I'm on tape for it. Uh, you can get me back if it does. If it goes much better, I'm fine with that. But what I see right now, Right before training camp, which training camp starts with the Steelers today, uh, I, I, it's paper. It's paper. <laughs> it's a paper team, and they're old. Uh, uh, they're uh, they're old. <laughs> I have no more adjectives. They're old. Okay, <laughs> I'm done. That's the AFC North. The AFC North. Okay, number one. I have the, um, again, Cleveland Browns, num uh, 1A, 1B, Baltimore Ravens, uh, coming in second, Cincinnati Bengals, and last, Pittsburgh City. This is the Beatle. This is Football 101. I went a little bit long. I apologize. I I'm all hyped up for the NFL training camps, y'all. What can I say? Uh, if uh, Please like, <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh, and we're just getting started. This is the AFC North. We're going to do the AFC South, AFC West, AFC, uh, NFC East, NFC North, NFC South, and the NFC West. This is the Beatle. It's time to get physical. Yeah. <laughs> we out.